Known to many as the deadliest fighter of the Vietnam War, or Israel's sledgehammer in the Yom Kippur War, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II is one of the Cold War's most recognisable and well-known aircraft. The Phantom would see over 36 years of service across the Vietnam, Yom Kippur and Iran-Iraq wars and in Operation Desert Storm. Operating for 12 nations including Australia, Israel, Japan, South Korea, Iran and the United Kingdom, Four of these nations still maintain the platform in service to this day. As a two-seat, twin-engined, all-weather, supersonic multi-role aircraft, the Phantom was capable of Mark 2.2 with an attack radius of 257 nautical miles and a ceiling of over 59,000 feet, allowing it to achieve 16 world performance records. In terms of payload, the Phantom could carry over 7,257 kilograms of weapons on nine external hardpoints ranging from air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles and an assortment of unguided munitions. The Phantom's production line would run from 1958 until 1981, with 5,057 of the 5,195 Phantoms produced in the United States, making it the second most produced supersonic military aircraft in history. Of the 5,057, the United States Air Force would take delivery of 2,874, whilst the Marine Corps and Navy took a combined 1,264. International customers accounted for 919 aircraft, of which Israel and Iran were the biggest. In September 1952, McDonnell Aircraft Corporation presented to the Department of Defense a new and improved variant of the F-3H Demon, the Super Demon, Despite the impressive nature of this project, and the vested interest by the United States Navy, it would soon find itself cancelled in favour of the Grumman XF-9F9 in replacement of the F-9F Cougar, and the Vought XF-8U1 programme which answered the Navy's need for a supersonic fighter. Despite this, a team led by design manager Dave Lewis continued to work on the project, eventually moulding it into a multi-role fighter bomber. By October of 1954, the United States Navy once more approached with a letter of intent for two prototypes, this time with a stipulation for an all-weather fleet defence interceptor. Lewis's team would adapt the prototype to see the addition of a second crew member and a powerful radar, improvements for air-to-air -air combat. Most Phantoms were powered by twin General Electric J-79 engines, Mounted alongside the fuselage, delivering over 17,900 pounds of thrust each with their afterburners engaged. On the 27th of May 1958, the Phantom Project took to the skies piloted by Robert C. Little. Following stellar reviews from the United States Navy, the project gained speed and some 45 aircraft were ordered. In 1961, the US Navy would adopt the Phantom. In January of the following year, Two Phantoms were loaned to the US Air Force, and shortly after, another 24 were loaned for evaluation. In June of 1962, the US Marine Corps would also adopt the Phantom. The US Air Force decided to follow the Navy and Marine Corps in adoption of the Phantom. The Phantom was the first multi-service aircraft flying concurrently with the US Navy, Air Force and Marine Corps. The Vietnam War would be the first operational theatre for the Phantom, here, it assumed air superiority and ground support roles. By the war's end, the United States Air Force had also made the Phantom its primary close air support aircraft. The first combat sortie of the Phantom would come on the 5th of August 1964, where Phantoms from the USS Constellation flew bomber escort to Skyhawks and Sky Raiders in Operation Pierce Arrow. A year later, on the 9th of April 1965, Lt. Terence Murphy and Ensign Ronald Fagan shot down a Chinese MiG-17 in the skies above Vietnam, only to be shot down by either another MiG or Murphy's wingman. Nonetheless, a month later, Command Lewis Page and Lt. John Smith shot down the first North Vietnamese MiG of the war. In all, the United States Navy and Marine Corps would lose 233 Phantoms throughout the duration of the war, whereas the Air Force would lose some 528 bringing the total to 761. 
Of the 761, the overwhelming majority were downed by surface-to-air missiles and anti-aircraft artillery. The story for the Phantoms in service with the US Navy would meet its end in the 1980s, with the introduction of the superior Grumman F-14 Tomcat. In the Marine Corps, the Phantom would remain in service into the early 1980s before steadily being phased out, with the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet taking its place. The US Air Force, who adopted the Phantom last, would also be the last to retire the platform. On the 15th of August 1990, the Phantom Wild Weasel variant was the only aircraft at the Air Force's disposal for the suppression of enemy air defences. And so, throughout Desert Storm in 1991, the Wild Weasel provided an essential capability which ensured that the Coalition aircraft were protected from Iraq's extensive and sophisticated air defence network. Five years later, in March 1996, the last US Air Force Phantoms F-4G Wild Weasel 5s were retired, marking the end of an extensive career in the US military. Outside of its military service in the US, the Phantom would also serve NASA at Cape Canaveral and the Dryden Flight Research Facility where Phantoms would chase X-15 hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft and where pilots were instrumented and various types of data collected to better understand the consequences of high-performance flying. The Phantom's second largest operator was the State of Israel, where some 240 Kornas and later Oref variants are supplied by the United States. Interest in the Phantom sparked in 1965 but was soundly rebuffed. It was only following losses during the Six-Day War, the imposition of a French arms embargo, and the flow of Soviet bloc weapons to Israel's adversaries that the US State Department changed its mind. On the 7th of January 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson granted approval for the sale to Israel, and immediately 44 F-4Es and 6 RF-4Es were sold to Israel under Peace Echo 1. The following September would see the first Phantom arrive into the heart of the so-called War of Attrition between Israel and its neighbours. Here, skirmishes of all kinds were commonplace, and so, on the 22nd of October 1969, Israeli Air Force Phantoms began attacks against a series of Egyptian surface-to-air missile sites along the west bank of the Suez Canal. The raids were a success, and a month later, an Israeli Phantom would claim its first MiG-21. It would take until the 2nd of April 1970 for a Phantom to be shot down by an enemy aircraft. During the so-called War of Attrition, a battle took place over the Suez Canal, where Israeli Air Force pilots came directly against Soviet pilots of the Soviet Air Forces. In an ambush marked by cunning and design, eight Dassault Mirage 3Cs flew into Egyptian airspace, drawing 24 Soviet MiG-21 MFs into a dogfight, where, unbeknownst to them, they would be ambushed by four F-4E Phantoms and a further four Mirage 3Cs. The end result saw five Soviet MiGs destroyed, with only minimal damage to a single Mirage. Three years later, on Israel's holiest day, Yom Kippur, an Egyptian-Syrian coalition would launch a joint offensive aimed at restoring territories lost from the Six-Day War. One of the Yom Kippur War's first battles would occur at Ophir, an Israeli airbase on the Sinai Peninsula. Here, some 28 Egyptian MiGs were challenged by two Israeli Phantoms. The results were seven Egyptian MiGs destroyed, with no Israeli casualties. For Israel, the Phantom had turned the balance of power once more in Israel's favour. With aerial superiority and the necessary systems and manoeuvres to render SA-2, SA-3 and SA-6 missiles redundant, the Phantom, alongside Skyhawks, would go on to destroy the vast majority of Egyptian and Syrian air defence systems. Nine years after the Yom Kippur War, the Phantom would once again take centre stage. During Operation Mole Cricket 19, Baz, Kafir and Nets aircraft provided air cover whilst Phantoms would attack Syrian SA-2, SA-3 and SA-6 batteries with their Shrike and standard anti-radiation missiles. It is reported that the Syrians fired 57 SA-6 missiles to no effect. 
Operation Mole Cricket 19 would end with 29 Syrian surface to air missile batteries destroyed and between 82 to 86 aircraft downed, courtesy of the Baz, Kafir, and Nets fighters above. It was in the mid 1970s and early 1980s that the Phantom would be slowly retired from its air superiority roles. With the introduction of the Baz and the Nets, the Phantom would be operated as a ground strike platform until its retirement. The last Phantom would be retired in 2004. In total, Israel lost 55 Phantoms, 32 during the Yom Kippur War, almost entirely to SAM batteries. In exchange for this, they would claim 116 air-to-air -air victories, a staggering success rate. Not far behind Israel, as the third largest operator of the Phantom, was the Imperial State of Iran. The Imperial State was sold 225 Phantoms before the Shah was deposed in the 1979 Iranian Revolution. The Shah possessed ambitious military plans, in which he would employ Iran's vast oil supply to turn it into a major military power in the Persian Gulf, and a key ally of the United States. Following the supplanting of the Imperial State with the Islamic Republic of Iran, Iran maintained some 188 operational phantoms. However, with weapons embargoes in place by the United States, the aircraft were plagued by part shortages, maintenance problems, and poorly trained pilots. Many of the trained pilots and maintenance personnel fled, as the Shah was forced into exile. When Iraq attacked Iran in September of 1980, kicking off the Iran-Iraq War, only 40% of the Iranian Phantom Fleet was operational, likely in part due to excessive cannibalization. However, air power was not to play a dominant role in the war, and despite Iranian Phantoms launching several penetration raids around Baghdad, air-to-air -air combat was minimal. In the first nine months of the war, some 60 Phantoms were lost due to SAM batteries, with countless others being cannibalized for extra parts. At the beginning of 1983, between 12 and 35 Phantoms could be put into the air at any given time. It's here until the end of the war in 1988, where the balance of power shifts. As Iranian air power degrades, Iraq procures Dassault Breguet Super Etendards and Mirage F1s, granting it significant advantages. Where Iran could generate no more than 30 to 60 sorties a day, Iraq was able to reach a peak of 600 per day by 1986. Today, Iran is believed to operate between 50 and 75 Phantoms, most of which are believed to be using components that had been delivered to Iran by Israel, the United States, and several other NATO countries during the Iran-Iraq War. Another notable operator of the Phantom was the Royal Navy. In the early 60s, the Royal Navy was lacking a replacement for their aging fleet of de Havilland Sea Vixen carrier fighters. In 1964, the Royal Navy withdrew from the Hawker Siddeley P1154 V Stoll project and eventually came to select the Phantom as its primary fleet air defence aircraft on the 1st of July 1964. In 1966, the Hawker Siddeley P1154 V Stoll project would be cancelled alongside the TSR2 in the infamous 1966 Defence White Paper. From 66 to 69, the Phantom was tested extensively by various squadrons of the fleet air arm. By March of 1969, the first operational Phantom squadron was stood up, 892 Naval Air Squadron. The British variant of the Phantom were re-engined with the Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan, in place of the General Electric J79 turbojet. This gave British Phantoms a 10% increase in operational radius and a 15% increase in ferry range, as well as better takeoff, initial climb, and low level acceleration figures. These benefits were traded against a reduced maximum speed, a lower ceiling, and a poorer altitude performance. 29 Phantoms were delivered to the Fleet Air Arm. By the end of 1978, the Fleet Air Arm's Phantoms had been transferred to the Royal Air Force as by then the Navy had become invested in the Hawker Siddeley Harrier. For the Royal Air Force, the Phantom came to replace the Hawker Hunter, and temporarily fulfil a strike role until the Anglo-French Sepicat Jaguar would become available. As the Jaguar entered service, 
The Phantom was reassigned to replace the English Electric Lightning and provide air defence duties until, in 1986, it was replaced by the Panavia Tornado air defence variant. The last two Phantom-equipped interceptor squadrons were disbanded in 1991, with the last RAF Phantoms leaving service in 92, following the disbandment of 56 and 74 squadrons. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, better known as Old Smokey, served an illustrious career, fighting over Vietnam, Israel, Iran, Iraq, and on air defence duties around the world. It earned its place as one of the greatest aircraft of the Cold War. <laughs>